side of heaven. But this is not everything. This is not everything. This is not everything. Amen. Oh God, there's a day coming. Oh hallelujah. When there shall be a jubilee, a celebration. We're talking about a party when the saints go marching in. I'm looking forward to that day. That's why I'm living this life the way I'm living it. I want nothing to come between me and my Savior. Nothing to come between me and my soul. I want nothing to stop me from seeing the face of the Almighty God. I want to press on. I want to push on. I want to live for Him. Forgetting the things that are behind me. And look forward, hallelujah, to the prize. Oh, my God, is in Christ Jesus. And so stay in the race. All right, are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? Yeah. All right, ready or not, here I come. <laughs> and I'm going with you or without you. Because we have a lot and just a few minutes to go. Amen. So work with me this morning. We are on a subject this morning. A very peculiar subject, interesting topic. We are on number 14 of the Declaration of Faith. We believe in the bodily resurrection. Eternal life for the righteous. 
an eternal punishment for the wicked. It's a subject that you have to approach powerfully. I pray and I pray and I pray and I say, Lord, I sure need you and this one. Why? Because there's a lot of people who have problem with what I've just said. Eternal punishment for the wicked. Yes. Hallelujah. And the body resurrection. But I believe without a shadow of a doubt, and I know within my heart, and according to the scripture, that one day, one day, in the great triumphant morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, we shall all rise to meet him. We shall all rise to greet him. And we shall have a marriage supper in the sky. So would you pray with me today? Would you talk back with me today as we journey through this for a little bit? There's so much in this topic. We believe in the bodily resurrection. Eternal life for the righteous. And eternal punishment. For the wicked. Amen. That's one area where some people have problem. Eternal punishment. For the wicked. Praise God. <laughs> Alright. The doctrine of the resurrection electrified the early church. In the New Testament, there are few doctrines in which more stress is laid. Yet, there are few doctrines and the churches today, which are treated with more neglect. Why most traditional creeds in the churches refer to the resurrection of the body, the same body we have in this life? Stay with me. It's much as deep. More like a teaching session today. One evangelist put it this way, one preacher put it this way, he says, as he attempt to explain the resurrection of the body, he said that it will consist of a regathering and reviving of all the bones, sinews, flesh, skin, etc. Whatever constituted a human body, regardless of how these parts have been disposed, no matter if the parts have been destroyed by fire or accident, or eaten by a fish, or beast, or prey, Amen. or if they had rotten in the ground and been absorbed as nutrients in various fruits, vegetables, and grass. And thus, been over and over and over again, transformed. The preacher said, he pictured the air filled with hands and arms, feet, bones, skin, snooze, etc. Of the billions who have lived and died seeking the other parts of their bodies. And that then the souls would come from heaven and hell and imprisoned in those resurrected bodies. And that's why personally I don't have a problem if someone says, burn me if I die. Amen. Draw me if I die. Yeah. Whatever you want to do with me when I die. Because one day the Bible said that this body, when it comes again and call your name, yeah. drown, burn, yeah. bury, eaten by animal, this body will come back to life yeah. and stand before an awesome God. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. So why should I spend all my days depicting, depicting, or, or trying to explain, or fighting with someone? Oh, they would want to lay the final days when they die. Oh, they would want to lay to rest. Amen. But when he comes back, he will call your name. Hallelujah. How absurd! And yet, how else could one explain the resurrection of some of the same body? No wonder very little is mentioned of the resurrection in today's public. And that is true. I'm not talking about this church only, but we hear every other kind of messages. The soothe the soul and ease us to where we want to go. Mm -hmm. We're not tired of hearing, name it or claim it. Hello, 
somebody? Yes. We heard it all, but how many times have you heard in the past months that someone talks about the resurrection of a body? Eternal punishment for the wicked. Eternal rest for the righteous. And so in our pulpit, we very seldom hear because what? It is not a popular subject. And as we go further, you will understand what I'm saying. Uh, hear the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 35 through 37. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 35 through 37. But someone will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool! That which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. Mm -hmm. Hear the right of Paul. Mm -hmm. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. Hear what he says. But bear grain, it may chance of wheat or some other grain. Verse 38, 38. But God giveth a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. What is Paul saying here? Let me explain this quickly as I try to make my notes and try to study this portion of scripture before we move on. What is Paul saying here? He was talking to the skeptics. Mm -hmm. And those who, who stand by the sunlight to criticize, and those who, who judge and do not have an understanding of the resurrection of the body of believers who will raise upon the day. Hear what he says. And with what body do they come? The writer said that we just read it in Corinthians. Now, this refers to the form, shape, size, etc. False teachers were making fun of the doctrine of the resurre resurrection. Yes. So the false teachers were making fun yes. of the resurrection yes. of Jesus Christ. And so Paul is now clearing up this confusion yes. to all of them. Yes. Of the human body. Verse 36, he says, you fool. It's right. They start off by saying, you fool. Mm -hmm. Now the spirit is answering to those who thought this false doctrine. So those who taught and teach the false doctrine, the spirit is now talking. The which is so is not quickened except it died. Hallelujah to God. All right. Paul takes this form from the word of Christ. When spoken of, the seed fall into the ground and dying and then bring forth much fruit, which is the nature of the harvest. John 12, 24. Verse 27, the little seed. When sown, we bring forth a beautiful plant. One cannot tell from the seed exactly what the plant will be. You're the writer. Verse 38, very powerful. The resurrection process is in the hand of God. And we must look at it that way. The natural eyes, the natural understanding will not comprehend the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This must be understood by faith. Hello, somebody. Hello. By faith. The resurrection process is in the hand or hands of God who can do all things. Hear me. The hands of God who can do not some things, but all things. If it's in the hands of the Almighty God who can do all things, then you don't have to worry. It's in His hands who can do all things. This thwarts every <laughs> every illusionary spe spe speculation. Every person will have their own body. Hear me. Every person will have their own body. Not that of another. They will have their own color, appearance, and etc., etc., etc. So we'll have our own appearance. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. In Acts 23, 6, we read. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other part Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead. 
I call into question. And I was studying one time and I came up with this. Uh, the Sadducees were so sad that they could not see. And the Pharisees were so far that they couldn't see. So far to see, so sad to see. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yeah. Ah, I'll just throw that in there. Try to see if you're awake. <laughs> Hallelujah. The whole Christian faith, listen to this, is built around Christ, his death on the cross, and his bodily, oh God, resurrection. Right. Right. The entire Christian faith is built around his death on the cross, oh, yeah. and his bodily resurrection. Yeah. If we do not believe that he died on the cross, then our Christian faith is in vain. If we do not believe that he got up again on the third day, just like he said, then all of this is nonsense. But I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to tell you that he arose from the grave with a mighty triumph on his home. No grave would hold his body down. He got up power. Thank you. So our Christian faith hangs on the very fact that he went to the cross. And he carried my sins at God. And he nailed them there. But on the third day, oh God, Easter is coming. I don't want to get over to Easter. But on the third day, he arose again with a mighty triumph of his soul. He arose the victor from the dark domain. And he is forever with the saints to reign. He arose. Hallelujah. My Christ. He's arose. Vainly they seal the tomb. Uh -huh. Jesus, my Savior. Vainly they watch and wait. Jesus, my Lord. The guards could not stop him. The stone could not hold him down. Ah, oh, he got up with all power. Yes, he did. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All power. All power. And all authority. Yes. So if we do not believe in these things, Without faith in both men, in men, we are just completely lost if we do not believe in this thing. Paul here expressed a hope that has sustained him through the ages of time. That there is to be a resurrection from the dead. Job, from the agony of a decaying body, could cry, If a man die, oh God, thank you, sir, shall he live again? All of my days, hallelujah, Woo. upon a time, okay. when I wake till my change come, okay. so, okay. in his decaying body, okay. you are suffering, you are sick, uh, the doctor said it's not looking good, uh, but I hear Job says, uh, I will wait on the Lord, all oh, the days of my life, uh, I will wait unto him, I wait on him, and Job cried out, in his pain and his agony, agony. Thank you, Lord. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Mm -hmm. yes. Thou wilt have a desire to work of thine hands. Thou wilt have a desire to work of thine hands. Job 14, 14 and 15. And his condition worsened. Hear this. But Job, his hope deepened. As his condition worsened, his hope got stronger in God. Can we get to the point that we know condition deteriorating even worse than we want it to be? But our faith deepened in Christ Jesus. For Christ I live, for Christ I die. Comes what may I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday. Come. Talk with me, hold on. Come on with me. I'm getting to where I want to go. Okay. Just bear with me. Thank you, Jesus. So his condition worsened, his hope deepened. For I know, Job said, that my Redeemer liveth, and that I shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. I'm from a country where we use a lot of words that we call our phrases vernaculars. So we'll do their same things like Jamaica, no problem, man. I was just Educated by Sister Marshall as they went to Jamaica on their, on their cruise, and I think Pastor was there. That the tour guide told them that uh, we don't have a problem, we only have one situation. 
a situation. So if you look at the houses, our fences, poor, we have our problems there, but they tend not to look at the problems. So if you said Jamaica, they said, no problem, man. But I just learned that we don't have problems anymore, only a situation. If you look at it that way, that we do not have problems, only a situation, you are on the right path. So we use these vernaculars, we use these terms, we use these words, whatever you want to call it, in different times or languages. But in my country, we have some men, they call themselves strong men, and down men, and general men. And so what they will do, they will find a street, or an area, or a territory, and they will control that street, that area, for themselves. And then we put up a sign that I'm the Dan, I'm the general, I rule things, and this is my area, this is where I reside. But every now and then, every now and then you will hear on the news, the strong man died by the gun, by the knife, our natural causes, our sicknesses. Every now and then, the dead man will kick over, and they sing sweet law, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. The dead man is dead. Yes. Still in his grave. And so all those people who rely and depend on them, he can't do anything for them anymore. But Job says, Job says, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Do you know today that your God is alive and well? Do you know that your Redeemer, he lives forevermore? Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Our God, yes. he's alive and well. Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. He lives. Hallelujah. So in spite of what you're going through, yes. this old body, Sister Marsha, you'll get up this morning and feel good. And sometimes before the day is over, you're not feeling so good. And you're wondering what happened, Brother Peter. But I got up this morning. I had my breakfast. I drank my tea. I had my coffee. I had my donuts. But I'm not feeling so good now. This body, this house. He's dying, this house is decaying. But he says, I don't want to get ahead of myself. He's preparing a home, a house not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. Oh God, though, this earthly house is something. But yet, he's preparing for us a house. So Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. And whenever you can be assured of something, it's always a good thing. I know my child. I know my church. I know my pastor. I know my job. I know how much I make. I know how much I pay. I know my medical history. I know, I know. It is a good thing to know. Job said, I know that my Redeemer. Oh God. My Redeemer lives. Let me move on. And then he will stand in the last days. And though my skin worms destroy this body yet in my flesh we're talking about the bodily, resu re bodily resurrection he says and though after my skin worms destroy this body yet in my flesh this body I shall see God Job 19 25 to 26 when David was compassed by the wicked Lurking secretly as greedy lions are prey. His hope of the resurrection defined the temporal threat. As for me, he said, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Wow. Psalm 17, 15. Yes. In the New Testament. In the New Testament. Jesus held forth his hope in an unremarkable terms. The dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. That's what we're talking about, the body of resurrection. Mm -hmm. He said, the dead will hear the voice of the Almighty God. And if they hear, they will live again. So that tells me mm -hmm. that everyone that thought that there is no resurrection of the dead is false. That's right. That's right. That's not what my Bible tells me. 
And that's why we have to live this life, life like it's only here. Amen. The reason I live this life, I don't want to be lost. Hallelujah. Let's live for him, Sister Davis. Yeah. Oh God, like he's about to burst the eastern sky. Yeah. The signs are foretelling us. Yeah. Oh, but he will come back. Yeah. I do not know the morning, night, and noon. Not even the angels. But when the father said, Son, go get my children. Right. She said, Last week you cannot be getting ready. I must be ready when yeah. he calls my name. Ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David, <clears throat> I was at the function that we had in St. Anne in Jamaica. Very good friend, my best, best friend. We like brothers, Ezra Nelson. His wife was there, but there were six, so they could not come into the church premises. So he parked his bus, parked his bus on the outside. And I went to talk to both of them. That was, that was in the month of January. She said, I'm not feeling well. I've been through one or two operations, and I have to go back to the doctor. And so, when the food was serving, I took the food, the juice, the cake, the salad, the soup, and I walked across the street, and I served them in the van. Bless. The wife looked at me, she said, God bless you, thank you. I had no idea that would be the last time I see her face. Mm -hmm. A week ago, I heard that she was in the hospital, not doing well. I tried to get a hold of my friend. The numbers get confused. I did got the right one. But before I could make the call yesterday, my wife sent me a message. She said, Sister Winsome, he's dead. I said, no, I spoke with her just in January. Looked good in her face. Yes, she was limping, but she looked good. She sounded good. She loved the Lord. Let me tell you something. You and I do not know the minute of the hour, but you will call her name, and you're going to be ready. Can he call your name, Michelle? And so I was talking to somebody yesterday and telling the person to pray for these people. And I said to that person, I said, no, you know what? I could be talking to you now. And in the next few minutes, you heard that Brother Macho is not here anymore. You could say to yourself, but I just spoke with him a few minutes ago. Hear me, church. Live for Christ. It's not a fake. It is not a joker. It is a real thing. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to say these things to make you feel guilty. But I'm saying life is real. Life is real. Sure. We gotta put aside the schism and the schism. Yes. That's right. The nonsense. If you wanna get up when he calls, yes, you will get up for the righteous will. I'll tell you later. And the same will. So everybody will get up. But the question is. Where will the wicked go? And where will the righteous go? I want to live for him every day. Not perfect. I fall with every now and then. But I hear the writer say, We fall down, but we get up. Oh God, we don't stay down. I hear David says, Oh Lord God, I will pick myself up again. For as the tear panted for the water broker, so panted my soul after the thee, oh God. I'm longing for you, Lord. I want to hear your voice. I want to feel your presence. Hallelujah. I must have a Savior with me. For I did not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me. And his arms around me thrown. Then, 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 for the fast of my soul shall fear no evil. Mm. And leads me where he will. Church is not a place for us to play. Jesus. That's right. Even we're playing. That's, right. That's what I like, Sister Kimby. She said these things all the time. Every time she gets up, she tells you don't play. Stop playing. Yeah. Like when she said, take your mask off. And every time you say that, I do like this spiritually. I'm putting mine off. Because you see, when the word comes forth, it's not for me to say, well, that's for the new sister. Exactly. Or that's for evangelist. Oh, that's for sister. Exactly. That's for sister Michelle. Mm -hmm. She acting act right. No. When the words come from the fast, I say, give it to me, God. Give it to me. Yeah. It's me, oh God, standing in the need of God. And that's why no, no matter how hard and tough this pastor preaches, or how a pastor over here preaches, I don't get offended about the word. Why should I get mad with God for it? That's right. That's right. Preach it. Preach it. Yes. That's for God is so big, I can't get around him. Yes. He's so low, I can't get under him. He's so wide, I can't get around him. So I stay 
right there in his arms. Never you get upset when the word is preached. But I know what you can say, oh me, oh my. <laughs> it's me. Let me move on. Let me move on. Oh God. Ah, oh, Pastor. Boy. <laughs> Hear what Martha says. Hear what Martha says. Martha. Yet a little while. Jesus said, and the word said, see me no more. But he see me because I live. He shall live also. John 14, 19. Such hope sustained Martha in the tragedy, tragedy, tragic loss of her brother. Martha said unto him, I know. <laughs> you know the story. Yes. That he shall arise again yes. in the resurrection on the last day. Paul could affirm amidst increased persecution yes. and imminent martyrdom. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, yes. an house that made with hands, yes. eternal yes. in the heavens. Yes. For this we groan earnestly, earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is yes. from heaven. Yes. <laughs> we groan earnestly. That is our lively hope. Yes, it is. The one day we will see him and be like him. Yes. We long to be in his presence. Yes, we, do. we long to be where he's at. That is our lively hope. Yes. So we want to live. We want to live. Yes. And we want to live for him. Yes. Let me talk about the general resurrection of both the righteous mm -hmm. and the wicked. Mm -hmm. Oh God. I tell you that this is heavy duty stuff today. While some would separate the resurrection of the righteous and the wicked by a thousand heat period, and others would say, there is no resurrection of the dead, 1 Corinthians 15, 12. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the scripture affirms a general and simultaneously resurrection of both Jesus taught, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Yes. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of domination. Mm. Let me tell you this again. Let me read it again. Let me read this again. Moral not at this. For the hour is coming. Zoom. In which all that are in the graves for the Dino shall hear his voice. Hallelujah. Everyone that died. He ends in thousands of thousands of years ago. Drawn. Burned. Eaten by wild animal. When he sounds the trumpet, when he comes back, when he calls, every person will stand before an awesome God in your body. Revelation. And so, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, sow seed of kindness. Do good to others. Mm -hmm. Do unto them as you would want them to do unto you. Right. Love your neighbor, the Bible says, as you love yourself. Uh -huh. Reach out to others. Serve God in the beauty of holiness. Oh, yeah. Live for Jesus Christ. Lift up his name. Holiness. Walk with him. Labor for him. Yeah. Touch others' lives for him. Live your life for Jesus Christ. And I must live my life for Jesus Christ. All of my days, I must live for him. Yes. It's not a part-time thing. Yes. It's not a part-time job. Oh, yes. This walk is a full-time. So I can put him off when I feel like I want to put him off. And I can't say I will pick you back up on Tuesday because I got my break. So I walk with you on Tuesday. And then on Sunday, I put him back aside and pick him up early Sunday morning before I come to church. It's a daily walk. I must walk with him. 
I must travel with him. I must go with him. I must serve him. I must talk about him. I must live for him. I must witness for him. I'm a witness for Jesus Christ. I must shine my light. Shine my light for Christ. So those who are in darkness will see my light shining and come to know Christ as their personal Savior. It's through the life that you are living that they will know that you are Christian and that you serve a great, big, wonderful God. Amen. It's not about the cross that you wear around your neck. A 25 pound Bible carrying your side on your back, put it up before people just to impress people. It's okay. But hide the word of God deep in your heart. Yeah. David said, I'd rather hide the word of God. I will hide the word of God deep in my heart that I might not sin against God. Yeah. The word must be in you, in your heart. Amen. All of the time. All the time. And so there is an eternal punishment for the wicked. Hear what Galatians 5, 19 to 21 says. Go ahead. Now the works of the flesh are manifested. <laughs> Which are these? Are you ready? Come on. And these, these are tough. These are, these, these are rough, tough. But true works. It will make your body shiver. Mm. And you think. Put on your thinking cap. And you want to draw close to him. He said, no. The works of the flesh are manifested. Which are these? Adultery. Fornication and cleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variances, emulation, 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 emulation. If you say fast, you'll never get it. Emulation. Raw. Thank you. Strive. Revelings and such like. After which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, Jesus is speaking, the they, are you ready? Which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. I like when my pastor said, live right, live right, live right, live right. <laughs> He will tell you that in a heartbeat. Live right. Jesus said, "They, those that practice these things, will not inherit the kingdom of God. We have no choice but to live for Him. Present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. We must live for Him. We must live a true life and a just life, not a two life, not a two face life, not one life here and one somewhere else. We must live when no." Jesus. Hallelujah. We must live for him, Sister Beverly. At work, at church, in a marketplace, with your grandchildren, with your neighbors, driving on the highway, somebody cut you off. You must still shine your light. Shine your light. The flesh sometimes we want to behave and seemly. Because it's not easy. It's not easy. Yes. When you're stuck in traffic. Oh. And you hold your position. Oh and some guy just get around your sister Michelle and just squeeze them suddenly. You don't drive like that. We in Jamaica we drive like that. Men can squeeze in tight spaces. But the drivers are used to that so they will make room for them. You've probably seen that. They're good, they're good drivers. But you're there and somebody just think that they want to hurry and they just drive and just do that. And you look at them, not in a mean way, as to say, that was not so good. You didn't do a good thing. But they gave you the finger. And the look. And you feel the old man sometimes rising up. You want to give them that one finger but fives. Oh God. But brother Pastor, you can't, you can't, you can't. Because sister, every time I think about doing that, I say to myself, what if I show five fingers and then wind my window down? And then one day I'm in church moderating. And here comes the brother sitting in the back. You, you are Christian. If you are a Christian, what am I? Have you ever think about that? 
I walk into the store and I teach my wife this all the time. And if you pass through the aisle and, and you knock something off, don't, don't just leave it like that. Pick it up and put it back. That's Christian ethics. That's, that's good Christian principle and manners. What if when you've done that and then rude to the attendant? One day you went to a church and they called Minister McLeod, come out the pulpit and give a testimony. And I get up and say, Praise the Lord, church. And then she's looking down. Is that him? We gotta be careful. We must. We have to be careful. The life that we live. And sometimes we bring things on ourselves. We act out of character. With all we had to do at that moment, just, just, just calm down. You know, we don't have the time. People do crazy stuff. And I want to react. Not because I'm short, I'm still tough. I got something on the inside of a man. Amen. And you want to react, Mother P. But when you think of the goodness of Jesus, and what he has done for you, you can't say the words you want to say. You cannot do the things you want to do. You can curse like you would want to curse. Why Jesus lives on the inside and that makes the difference. The God is on the inside. Yeah. Now working on the outside. Yeah. And you know what happened? You might cross paths with those individuals again, Brother Craig. And they will say, what makes you smile? Why are you so calm in the midst of this? I read it all the time. Mm. Even on the work floor, floor at my workplace, mm. half the people call me Pastor Rev. They say there's something different about you. I don't laugh at their corny jokes. I love jokes. If it's clean, I laugh until I roll on the floor. Yes. Give me a good joke and I laugh like there's no tomorrow. Yes. But when he started to come dirty as a Christian, yeah. I move away from that. That's right. That's right. That's the truth. If you're cursing, excuse me. I love you, but I gotta excuse myself. And we have to be bold for Christ. Yeah. Don't care if you hurt your feelings. I don't care about hurting your feelings. Right. And some of these people know that you're born again Christian, but yet they bring these things to you. Right. Yes. They'll ask me a question. Oh. If you marry, you'll have a girlfriend on the side. It's done. Just like they try to trump Jesus with these things, they bring these things to you to hear what you have to say. Then they will say, I thought you were a child of God. They will say these things to trip you up. But stand firm for Christ. Let them know that I'm saved and sanctified. Water baptized. Fire in my bones. Jesus on my mind. And I'm running for my life. If anybody asks me, what the matter with you, my son? Tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. Want Jesus in my mind, and I'm running for my life. We must make a difference in our world today. Sister Savage, you were the moderator. You're supposed to keep me in check uh, with the time. And when you give me a nice look to my Christian smile like this, I know I'm almost there. I'm just putting in the spot. So there is a reward for those who died in Christ. And there's domination for those who died without Christ. Sin will kill you spiritually. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Talking about the wicked. Isaiah 57, 7. Their feet run to evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their path. Talking about the evil. A general resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. Let me go a little further. Further proof of a general rather, listen carefully, than a separate resurrection of the just and unjust is seen from the fact that both classes will raise and judge at Christ's second coming. But here, he, listen to this. The Christian dead will be raised to be with the Lord. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend 
descending from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, that we which are alive and remain shall call up to meet him in the air. And Paul said, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Don't try to figure out everything. Yeah. Try to get an understanding yeah. of what the word of God is saying. But on spring of day, he's trying to figure this God out. We might not be able to, we can't figure him out. This is the mind. We will not figure God out. All we have to do is love him. Understand what he said in the word. Right. Trust him and serve God yeah. by faith. This Christian yes. pathway, this Christian walker, is a hundred percent a faith walk. No faith is, no faith is, Hebrews 11, faith is this, and faith is that, and faith is this, it is a faith walk. Yes, amen. That's right. And that's why Brother Marshall was quick to tell you if he was here, you can't walk in the flesh and fulfill the spiritual things. No, no. Because flesh is fleshy. Corner. But Pastor, we must walk in the spirit. Yes. Amen. I understand. Oh, yes. yes. If we ever lose sight of faith, all oh, this cross means nothing to us. And that's why people have so much confusion and misunderstanding. And they don't get it because they're approaching these things with the natural eyes. Yeah. No one can serve God in the natural. The natural is carnal and wicked and corrupt. Oh, a wretched man that I am. But when the Spirit of God comes in you, when He saved you and sanctified you and changed you and filled you and lift you up, I'm a brand new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Why? Because Jesus. He's the one on the inside. He takes up residence. He lives in my heart. And I walk with him and talk with him. And life's not long, life's not a road. It is a faith walk. Come on, somebody say a faith walk. We must walk by faith and not by sight. Can I go a little further? I'm almost there. Oh God. So there are two. But two scriptures, Paul is saying, are often used to differentiate between the resurrection of the righteous and the wicked. And these are Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 6, and Revelation 20, 5 through 6. The Thessalonian passage most certainly says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Listen to this. The dead in Christ shall rise first. But the question is, first before what? Are you with me? Yes. It is not first before the wicked dead are raised. For that is no part of the contents. But rather first before the saints who are still living are caught up to be with the Lord. That is the living Christians. So the living Christians will not perceive the dead ones in their being united with the Lord. This is true. And we should understand this in the contents and make it, uh, we should not make it more than what the scriptures say. My note says here that if we try to change this, then that's abuse of scripture. Amen. Okay. It's views of scripture, so we need to keep that yeah. Yeah. in the right content. Bodily resurrection. There are some who presume to deny the bodily resurrection. Bodily resurrection. Even Jesus' body. Okay. And this one just uh, just makes you smile because we know that this is contrary to what the scripture says. Even Jesus' body, they say, was permanently dissolved into some gaseous substance. So, Brother Foster, you and I know that this can't be true. Amen. So, they are saying that he did not really raise from the dead of the two. And we hear more about this in Easter coming up next month, later this month, and next month. They are saying that 
The story that they're telling about your God, that he arose from the dead, that's not true. His body was dissolved into some kind of substance. Explain that to me, somebody. <laughs> Break it down to me so I can understand. For my Bible tells me that he said, on the third day, I will rise again. Amen. They buried him, sir. They put him in the tomb. But he said that this body will get up from the tomb. No gaseous substance that is dissolved in the grave. How could this be medically? I don't know. But I know Jesus says that I will rise again. And if I live, if I rise, you will rise. And if I live, you will live. I live so that you will live. So, get up. From the two, as they went, thank you, to look for his body, the great cloth that bound his face and hands and feet was neatly folded. The angels tell him the story. Who do you see? He's not among the dead. <laughs> He's not here. If we look at the Easter, Sister Ben, story is one of my favorite story and time of the year. Amen. It makes me laugh and it makes me cry on the inside. Because when I think of what God, I'm not, I, I'm, I don't sorry for God. I can't sorry for him. He paid the price. Yes. I'm appreciative for what he did for me on the cross. Thank you for the blood. So it makes me think Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Jesus. that he paid his life on the cross. And that's why on first Sunday, I get happy even though we sing the same song. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. That washes white as snow. And if Brother Henry was here, we say, I know it was the blood of Jesus. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. So his blood shed so we might live and have life and have it more abundantly. By his stripes we are made whole. And so I appreciate the fact that we celebrated his death, burial, and resurrection. And I love Easter time, Pastor, because we can come and reflect with one another of the things that he has been through. And the most important thing that I like about it is that everything that he says true. came to pass. Hallelujah. And that's why I don't understand why people still have problems with this. Everything that's in the scripture that he said, I will go through. And I will do this, and I will do that. They lay me down the temple. We we'll throw down on the three days. We we'll raise up again. Every single event came to pass. Hallelujah. So when they couldn't find past the normal excuses to really tell the truth. And this is where the enemy will trip us up. When he can't find the truth, he can tell the lie on you. All they have to do is to say that his body is open. All his disciples came for the pastor and stole the body. That's nonsense. Because they tell me there was guards there. No. How could I move that stone? That was there. The guards didn't go to sleep. Oh my God, but this is a mystery, man. Come on, it's a mystery, it's a mystery. Let me wrap this thing up before getting to, coming to a close here. It is a mystery! We must understand. So he was resurrected. Rather than me reunited with the spirit, reunited, reunited with the spirit at that garden too. But he, listen to this. But such a theory is in direct conflict with what the Bible presents as a resurrection. When Jesus took the hand of the daughter of Jairus, she arose. Stay with me. That was bodily resurrection. When Jesus took the hand of Jairus' daughter, 
she arose, Mark 5, 41 and 42. That was bodily resurrection. Jesus approached the tomb of Lazarus. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and feet with a grave cloth, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. You know, every time I read this passage right here, Loose him and let him go. And I wonder why Jesus, this is just my theology right here. Why Jesus would not have said, come forth, be free from your grave cloth. When he called Lazarus, the Bible said he came forth, hands bone and feet bone. And Jesus said to the people that was there, loose him and let him go. Who wrapped him up in the first place? Talk to me. The people. The people wrapped him up. And that's why I tell you, God is going to just change some things around and have the enemy to bless us. The same one that curses us, they will turn around and bless us, Sister Marcia. The same one that tells you will not be successful. They will come back and say, yes, you are blessed and you are successful. These were the people who bound him. Jesus said, you lose him and let him go. Every now and then we need to tell the devil, you may not lose me and let me go. I'm a child of a king. Lose me and set me free. I stand in the name of Jesus. Lose me and set me free. The blood is on my head and my shoulder. I'm covered in the blood. Lose me and set me free. Jesus said, you are talking. And let him go free. And that makes sense to me. He said he will have his enemies to bless you. Huh? Curse you. Well, those that curse you will bless you. I don't have time to tell you the situation right now because time is moving. I can't tell you this. But I will tell you some other time. So here, Lazarus, he came forth. The Bible said, that is a bodily resurrection. John 11, 43 to 44. At the death of Jesus, there was a great earthquake, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many, Matthew 27, 52 to 53. That was a bodily resurrection. I am just trying to prove and let everybody know, remind you, that there is a bodily resurrection. All of these people have mentioned, Jairus' daughter, Lazarus, Jesus himself, these people were dead, but Jesus called their name and they came back to life. A bodily resurrection. So tell the enemy, tell the devil that I will rise again. No matter if I die, burn, or, 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 or eaten by an animal, I will rise again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Resurrection. Quickly, I want to do one more thing here before I let you go. Brother Ross, can you give me uh, Psalm 1? One and then John 6, 52, 54. And I'm holding here. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. John 6. Give me some one, one first, please. I know that my heart, but I want to let him not read it. It's right here. Thank you. He says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of waters, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly, come on, talk to me. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chalk of the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Fifty says, This is the prayer which came down from heaven, that a man may eat therefore not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. Mm -hmm. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, Amen. which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strong among themselves, saying, How can this man give his 
his flesh to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, I like what Jesus does wait until they criticize and people say what they want to say. He didn't really interrupt them, he didn't say. Then Jesus says, He says, He said, You're verily, verily, truly, truly. And I like when He says two times, Verily, verily, He said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, He have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, oh hallelujah, and drinketh my blood, and eateth eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Can I read this again in your hearing as I close? Whosoever eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. He said, I will raise him up. So how can there be no resurrection? Yes, body. You would tell me that all these scriptures are not true. They're very much alive. Amen. That's the word of God. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Death is swallowed up into victory. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have been begotten again into a living life. We hope. First Peter 1 3. He has delivered us from the bondage to which we have been subject. Ten. By the fear of death, we have Hebrews 2.15. And no matter what forces Satan may marshal against us, one day the heavens will resound with a shout of the redeemed. And the writer says, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? And we can shout hallelujah. We arise, we shall rise. We shall rise again. Oh grave, where is thy sting? Oh death, where is thy victory? We shall arise. We shall rise again. The grave will not hold us down. Death will not hold us down. We shall rise one day and live forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Would you stand with me at this time, please? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.